To add insult to injury, yesterday the Taliban held a parade at Bagram Air Base, showing off the weapons and military equipment Joe and Kamala left behind. Joining us now, two veterans who served in Afghanistan, Army Master Sergeant and Save Our Allies co-founder Tim Kennedy, along with Marine Force Recon veteran and founder of the Mighty Oaks Foundation, Chad Robichaud, whose new book, A Mission Without Borders, is out now and sitting on my desk, dog-eared. <laughs> Gentlemen, good to see both of you. Tim, the way, well, I'll call it the Biden-Harris doctrine that we've seen in the last three and a half years is empower our enemies, embolden evil, betray and abandon our allies. America weakened, America on her ass. Would a four years under Kamala Harris as the commander in chief be any different than what we've seen in the last three and a half? You know, honestly, I think it's just going to be worse. Um, I, I was on the ground on October 20, on uh, August 26, when those 13 service members died. Um, the the catastrophic failure that was the withdrawal from Afghanistan, after 20 years at war there, um, it, it was heart wrenching, and it's even continuing to perpetuate the damage to our nation, as service members that served in Afghanistan are dying by suicide in record record numbers. Um, you know the. The, the, the evil that occurred in Afghanistan, you know, it, it is indescribable for those that were at the helm to say, yeah, I'm okay with the way that we left. I'm okay with the decisions that we made. I was the last person in the room, and more of the same is just going to be catastrophic to our position strategically in the world. You know, Chad, I think time often gives perspective. And as we look back now three years on, um, how has the world changed? Uh, since the world saw that ill-fated withdrawal, the, uh, the, 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 the Taliban taking our weapons, $80 billion worth, uh, Abbeygate, what are the consequences three years on of what happened three years ago? Well, the world is a much more dangerous place. Uh, one of the main reasons is because of Afghanistan. That withdrawal, the whole world was watching, our enemies were watching. As President Biden and, and Vice President Kamala Harris made the decision to withdraw from Afghanistan, Parking Bagram Air Force Base, the most strategic place in the globe between Iraq, Iran, Russia, and China. We left Americans there. We had 13 service, our service members there were killed. We left uh, our allies there. We left, uh, we left 20 million women and little girls to be sexually enslaved. Tim and I had to go there and, and do what the government wouldn't to rescue people that were left behind. So many NGOs went there to do that. And right now, looking at a parade where, by the way, the diplomats at the parade are Iran, Iran and China on our base with our equipment, $80 billion of equipment, uh, parading around with our rifles and our MRAPs. And, and meanwhile, if people don't know, we're still giving them $87 million a week, half of which is cash, going to people on the FBI's top 10 terrorist, mo terrorist uh, most wanted list. And it may sound crazy, but it is in fact true. And they're still doing it right now, today, with our taxpayer dollars. And Tim, on top of that, all of the, the all of the problem spots are being indirectly funded by the Harris-Biden administration, that because of the fecklessness and weakness in them dealing with Iran, they've allowed Iran to earn at least $100 billion from exporting oil, that they have allowed Russia to export oil to China and, and other nations, that we are indirectly funding terrorism and attacks on our own soldiers and attacks on Israel, just simply because they don't care, I suppose, that they want America weak. Yeah, um, you, you, you keep using indirectly. That, that's inaccurate. Um, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, they're, they're being funded um, by organizations that we give money to, plain and simply. We are in um, open conflict on multiple fronts. Um, Via proxy, you know, while it, uh, Americans with flags on their shoulders um, are getting wound bases for, like, we, we are in absolute open warfare right now. We're in diplomatic warfare, we're in an information warfare, we're in a military warfare, we're in an economic warfare. Some of that warfare is being funded by taxpayer dollars, not indirectly, directly. Um, it, it's a travesty, and every every single taxpayer should be outraged, and every single American should be stomping uh, at every single one of their polit political representatives and demanding immediate change. You know, Chad, I have to imagine that uh, again, the, the threat of the American military, our armaments, and the will of our American soldiers—that's threatening and can maybe uh, make people think twice. 
But it really matters who the commander in chief is, doesn't it? I mean, how you use that military, how you use the men and women and the armaments against your enemies truly matters. And weak people don't beget strength, but strong leaders, strong presidents. Don't you see that respect come around the world when you have someone who knows how to use and exercise that power? Absolutely. And look, th this isn't my opinion. This is a, this is, there's a history, a track history of, of looking at what has happened in the world. Uh, when President Obama and Vice President uh, Biden was in office, uh, Putin went across it and, and, and took uh, Crimea. Uh, and then right. during the four years President Trump was in office, he did not. During the four years President Trump was in office, we did not have U.S. troops attacked uh, in, in Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban knew better. ISIS was, was obliterated, which President Obama had said was they were a generational threat. President Trump did it in five months, erased them off the planet. Uh, I was just sitting with Sebastian Gorky yesterday. He told me about some of the things that was said by President Trump in the war room. Kill them, get rid of them. They have no place on this planet. All they do is harm people. Uh, when the world has a strong commander in chief in the, in the White House on Pennsylvania Avenue, the world is a safer place. Right now, the Oval Office is absent of leadership, period. It's not even, a, it's not even a weakness. It's completely absent. It, Tim, it's not just the, the walk of these of Biden and Harris. It's also the talk. It's how blithely that they lied when during the Afghanistan withdrawal. If you want to get to the airport, you can get to the airport. We won't leave anyone behind. Al Qaeda is gone from Afghanistan. I could go on, but it's also the lack of talk. And I go back to the, I'm sitting here and if I have a look on my face, looking at these the faces of these 13 service members who were killed at Abbey Gate. And I look at all of their names, and I think of all of their family members, and I know that neither Joe Biden or Kamala Harris have ever uttered their names, not even to their family members. Yeah, um, see, seeing their face hurts. Um, I was members that morning, the day of the attack, uh, she volunteered to come and help search uh, refugees that we're bringing on to the air base to try and fly them out. And uh, she, she was woken up in, in the middle of the morning, came out and was searching in, in the middle of the most uh, dangerous day, uh, perhaps even during the whole entire time that we're in Afghanistan, she gets out of bed after she'd been working 12 hours. She has another 12 hour shift and she, she volunteers her time. And then a few hours later, um, she dies at Abbey Gate. Um, you know, it, it, uh, having fought in Afghanistan um, and then being back there during the evacuation, it hurts still to this day as it hurts so many service members. And, you know, it, it's not just the way that they talk. It's the policies that they fail to enforce. Mm -hmm. And even worse, the policies that they put forth um, as solutions that we know are just complicit and weak. And the rest of the world looks at us and we are crumbling on our position in the world stage is being broken down inch by inch. We have to demonstrate mm -hmm. strength. Yeah. And it's time for us to demonstrate that from the White House. And the White House disrespects the yeah. men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice with these weak yep. policies. Tim Kennedy, Chad Robershaw, thank you, gentlemen, for your service and being with us on thank the bottom you so line. Much. We are grateful. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. All right.